we got a question, um, or a couple of people asking, why is it that we called Jeremy the 1984 Kingman County T-Ball Defensive Player of the Year Award winner? Okay. There's a story behind this. Jeremy, go. All right. I, um, in December of 2016, I had been doing stand-up about six months, and I was uh, asked to be the entertainment at a Christmas party for a local law firm. Um, I won't give their name because I don't remember it, and because uh, they're a law firm. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say who it was. Um, anyways, uh, I actually, Derek is the one who hooked me up with the gig. They had approached him. He'd been doing stand-up for way longer at that point. Still has. That that won't change. I can't ever actually catch him. <laughs> um, but uh, Derek was going to be on Wheel of Fortune, so he recommended me, and he asked me if I wanted to do it, and I said, okay, so I contact the guy. I talked to a guy named Daryl, who's the senior partner for this law firm, and uh, he tells me that uh, every year for the last 17 years, um, that he has organized the company Christmas party and that he has uh, every year hired local entertainers, you know, singers, dancers, jugglers, whatever, <laughs> plate spinners. Um, <laughs> Steve. But every year he hired a different uh, Doug. Doug. Doug was his name. Um, but <laughs> Daryl said that uh, every year they hire local entertainers and every year he keeps this a secret from the other people in the office, and then they make a game out of it where people try to guess. And uh, I think if, if anybody ever actually guessed it right, then they won some kind of a prize or something. But anyways, um, this year he had never had a stand-up comedian before, and so he was really looking forward to it. And uh, so he tells me where is that is in the banquet room of a sports bar. Um, he tells me the day and what time to be there. Uh, tells me it pays 100 bucks to do a 15-minute set. And um, they would cover my bar tab, which, you know, I know $100 is not life-changing money, but to go act like a jackass for 15 minutes, that's, that's a decent wage. I mean, I don't know what I had done, would have done if I wasn't going to do this, but uh, chances are I was going to be acting like a jackass, <laughs> and I was probably going to be doing it for free. So, um, so I said, yeah, absolutely, I'll take this. And, you know, back then, I mean, I rarely got paid to do stand-up. And if I did, it was, you know, 20 bucks or whatever. So yeah. this was, at the time, the <clears throat> most I had ever been paid to do stand-up. And so I was really looking forward to it. And the day comes, and, uh, you know, it's a sports bar, so I want to adhere to the theme. And so I wear my lucky baseball jersey matching cap, and I show up and uh, – Get there about a half hour before I'm supposed to, because the promise of free drinks makes me very prompt. <laughs> and uh, I get there, and I, I text him to let him know that I'm there, and he comes out, and, oh, he is just excited. This this is his fucking thing. <laughs> Putting this together, he is it's just something he takes great pride in. And uh, he tells me, hey, um, look, we're actually, we just got the food served to us, so we're actually running about... 30 minutes behind. So it's probably going to be about an hour, uh, but we'll still cover your bar tab. If you want to, are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I am. <laughs> um, and so he, he tells me, uh, he asked if there was anything else that I need. And at that time I would record video record all of my sets. And, uh, you know, so I asked if there was a place where I could set up my phone or whatever, cause I'd like to go back and, look at it and see where things went wrong. If I did anything wrong or see ways I can improve. Cause I thought people actually gave a fuck and, <laughs> and I actually gave a fuck at that time. So, um, he said, well, we can have, uh, my intern Shelly hold your phone whenever the time comes. And I said, okay. He said, how do you want me to introduce you? And I had zero credits at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, it had actually happened a couple other times where somebody asked that. And I always gave him the same answer the 1984 Kingman County T-Ball League Defensive Player of the Year. And when I told him that, he about doubled over laughing. <laughs> he just thought that was absolutely great. And it, it had always worked in the past. It, you know, <laughs> gives the crowd a little chuckle beforehand, kind of gets them on my side before I ever even take the stage so they're ready to laugh and all that. And uh, so, you know, I'm great. He, he writes that down, and he goes, man, you just, you just hang out here, and uh, I'll come get you when, when we're ready, and, and we'll do this. He just almost skipped back to the, back to the <laughs> scene. 
<laughs> so he left me to play a game that I like to call, let's see how many beers I can drink in an hour. <laughs> and uh, the answer to that is approximately several. Um, several teen? Yeah, somewhere around in there. It, it's, it was a lot enough to uh, make me drunk. <laughs> and so an hour goes by, he comes and gets me and says, we're ready. Uh, and he walks me back to the banquet room. And I can see through the door that there's a little stage area set up. There's probably 40, 45 people in there. And uh, there's a, a nice little PA system with a wireless microphone and all that. He said, wait here, and I'll, I'll go in and introduce you. Okay. He, uh, then he takes my phone, and he gives it to Shelly, the intern. And uh, we proceed. And he, he goes in, grabs the mic. He says, hey, everybody, um, just wanted to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Thank you all for another great year. We've had a really good year. We've got some interesting challenges coming up in the next year, but, you know, we're, we really look forward to the challenges and, uh, you know, just blah, blah, typical office Christmas bullshit. party bullshit. And he goes, now for your entertainment tonight. I know you've all been waiting. Uh, so without further ado, please welcome the 1984 Kingman County T-Ball League Defensive Player of the Year, Mr. Jeremy Joseph. And rather than the laugh I usually get, I just kind of got the... <laughs> and it didn't dawn on me what happened until i went back and watched the video of it this asshole's been keeping it a secret and then never told him i was a comedian <laughs> um now now i realized that this whole thing <laughs> Sounds totally absurd, but over the last five years, the the acts that he had picked were like a, a tap dancer, an accordion player, a, a cowboy poet, a xylophone player, and a mime. So they had progressively gotten dumber every year, just worse choices. Plus, I was wearing a baseball jersey and cap, so I was dressed the part. And so I walk up to the stage, not knowing what to do here, because I had never gotten this reaction before. And they're very confused <laughs> looking at me. I thought they were just being stuck up or whatever, didn't want to, you know, didn't want to participate in the fun. And I'm thinking, what have I gotten myself into? And they're sitting there going, what the fuck is happening? Why is this happening? You know, what's he going to do? Is he going to do like a T-ball demonstration? <laughs> I, I guess that could be interesting, but he brought no equipment with him. So the only other thing you could probably do is like give a motivational speech. Like the lessons I learned in T-ball helped me to win this defensive player of the year. I mean, it's not even a real award. I picked that award that because the idea of, I don't know if you've seen much T-ball, but they're not really playing a lot of defense. It's... The, the idea that there would be a, a defensive player of the year was just absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> but, you know, my uh, keep in mind, you know, if I'm going to give like some kind of motivational speech, my attorney or my, my audience is made up of attorneys. These people are very successful. <laughs> they, they've gone through college, studied for the LSATs, passed them, did well enough in college to get accepted into law school passed law school, which is significantly harder, and then studied for and passed the bar. It's a career fueled by ambition. You don't get that job because your uncle knew a guy, you know? <laughs> you, don't, you don't fall ass backwards into being an attorney. You have to work really hard at it, and now some fat asshole who won some obscure T-ball award three decades ago is going to come tell you how to live life? Not only is he hanging his hat on that, but... He's managing to still somehow parlay that into personal appearances. <laughs> and then they kind of felt better that I wasn't going to be giving a speech because Daryl walked off with the wireless microphone. <laughs> and so I'm up there looking, at, looking around, but it legitimately on the video looks like I'm just going, yeah, that's right. Drink it in. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and so... <laughs> At this point, I've had a lot to drink, remember, so I'm getting pissed because I feel like I'm being rejected. And, you know, the only bit of encouragement I got was when some guy off to the side just yells out, Hey, way to go, buddy! <laughs> 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 
Which, by the way, is something you don't holler to an adult unless you're pretty sure he's legit mentally retarded. That is the only time you'll yell that, with the exception of if the guy's name happens to be Buddy. And that was not the case here. So, they, they were looking over at their boss. This, this is the senior partner. They've hitched their careers to this guy, oh, and he's just smiling his ass off. He loves it. And because he knows what's happening, nobody else does. They're looking at this guy who apparently thought this was a good idea. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> what did, what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> so they were very, very confused, which had to be just multiplied exponentially when I finally got the microphone and start talking about my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and they just weren't getting it. And by the end, a few of them were figuring out what was going on. But I was already just phoning it in at this point, thinking, oh, these stuck up fucking assholes. Fuck them. And so I was literally like watching my watch and I walked off stage in mid joke. I was like, and so there I am with my dick in the flower pot. And good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so I, I walk off stage. And I go up to Daryl, who's gone out back out into the hallway by now, and I'm ready for a fucking fight because I think he's going to not pay me or whatever. And um, surprisingly, he peels off a hundred dollar bill and hands it to me. But uh, he says to me, "You know, boy, I sure thought that'd go better." Now I pulled a Daryl here. I've still got the mic in my hand, <laughs> and it's hot. <laughs> And I said, yeah, you'd think for $400 an hour plus expenses, you'd get better results. Now you know how your clients must feel. <laughs> and I, I dropped the mic <laughs> and strutted out of there like I had just taken on the world until I remembered Shelly still had my fucking phone. <laughs> <laughs> so it got really awkward when I had to come back in for it. But yeah, that was the most awkward time that I ever had on a comedy stage. Uh